welcome to the Dice vs Cards. Today we're looking at Marvel Champions, the card game. And that distinction is important because there are far too many Marvel games out there with the word champion in them. So this is a one to four player cooperative hand management game because you're going to be playing cards from your hand that will either have a semi-permanent or temporary effect on your game plan. And variable player powers because all of the superheroes in the box have their own strengths and weaknesses. So you play a superhero such as Batman, Superman. What? What? No Batman? No Superman? Oh, I know this isn't DC, but I'm applying that logic that whenever you talk about VHS, you have to give a nod to Betamax. And for those of you with less miles on the clock than old geezer Benji, the equivalent would be Blu-ray and HD DVD. So you actually get to play as superheroes like She-Hulk, Iron Man, Spider-Man and Captain Marvel. And you're going to be pitting your skills and brawn against villains like Rhino and Ultron. So let's see how this plays and whether this could be the next game for you. So the object of the game as players is to defeat the villain by doing damage through all of the villain's iterations enough to ultimately reduce its hit points to zero. And to lose the game, the villain has to fulfill the scheme that you're going up against or defeat all of the superheroes that you're playing with. So the learn to play guide will help you populate the encounter deck and this is where all the perils and minions you're going to face throughout the game are going to be drawn from and they're going to be aiding the villain in their scheming and in their trying to kill you off. You'll see you've got a number of tokens here as well, condition cards, damage tokens, threat tokens, that sort of thing. And then we have our hero decks. So again the learn to play guide helps you with deck building in that starter game but suffice to say each superhero has got its own identity and then set of identity cards then to supplement your deck you're going to be picking a role for each of the superheroes you can choose from and there are four roles that come in this core box they are leadership aggression, justice and protection and they add a modular sense to your deck building because they've each got different styles of play so you could want to play with Spider-Man as a protection character or as an aggression character and that will differ, change the way you're going to play Spider-Man. Your so identity card has got two sides to it, the alter ego side here and the hero side and you'll start the game in alter ego form and draw a number of cards equal to the hand size at the bottom of the card. So each turn is broken down into two phases and the first is the player phase and this is where you as a team get to do things starting with the first player who has the first player token and rotating around the table clockwise. So you can do a number of things on the player turn, you can play cards from your hand and you'll see the cost to play each card can be found in the top left hand corner. But cards will also have a resource generation symbol in the bottom left hand corner of the card because each card has multi functions in that it can either be used as its main body or as a resource generator. So you need to decide on any given turn what cards are disposable in your hand and can be used as resources. Although there are particular cards that just act as resources and generally give you more bang for your buck. So the cards in your hand you'll come across are generally allies that are going to help you permanently before they die, help you in your calls and upgrade cards that you can add to your superhero and other one time effect cards uh, as you'd expect that may do damage or cause an inconvenience to the villain that sort of thing. But we then get to the bulk of the turn which is you trying to do damage or trying to thwart the villain's scheme. So you can flip your identity card once per turn and here you'll see on the hero side it's got attributes that are going to allow you to do that. So you'll thwart your the villain scheme because each villain phase which will come to threat tokens are going to be placed on this card in order to progress the villain's scheme and this the number of tokens required is scalable dependent on the number of players but remember you lose the game as soon as the villain meets that threat threshold so you'll be dealing damage with attack and you can be 
attacking minions that will be drawn from the encounter deck or going straight from the, for the villain. Remember, killing the villain over however many iterations it has will win you the game. And then it's got a defense attribute here because that will allow you to absorb incoming damage from villains and from minions. So once you've done all the actions you want on your turn, you then pass the turn. But before you do, you're going to ready or untap any cards that you've tapped throughout. And then you're going to discard any number of cards from your hand and draw back up to your hand size. And then your hand size can differ depending on what form your identity is. So one last thing you might want to do on the player turn is if you're in the alter ego form and you've taken damage. So each identity or superhero has its own set of hit, starting hit points. And the main means within which you can recover those is only when you're in alter ego form. So here there's a recovery stat on Peter Parker of three. So you can tap or exhaust that card to recover three hit points. So once you've done all of that, we then move on to the villain phase. So in the villain phase, they're going to be taking a number of activation equal to the number of players. And they'll also take a different action dependent on what form your identity currently is. So if you're in your, e your hero form like here with Spider-Man, the villain and any minions that you may have drawn are going to be doing damage to you and your allies. So as I've already mentioned, if you've got a ready hero or ally, you can tap that down to absorb some of that damage. But it's not just a case of how much attack is how much damage the villain or villain does. You're also going to be drawing cards face down before you decide because these are going to have the ability to boost the attack strength of villains, depending on the number of symbols in the bottom right hand corner. So here Rhino would be doing 2 plus 1 damage. Remember you've only got finite hit points so be careful to manage your hit points and don't be afraid to let al throw allies in front of the bus and take that necessary damage. So however if you're in your alter ego form come the villain phase, the villain's instead going to be scheming. So it gives you protection from damage but it's going to add threat tokens to the scheme and obviously once things get out of hand in that regard you could possibly lose the game. So once you've done that then each player is going to draw the top card of the encounter deck and resolve it. So you might have things like this minion Hydra mercenary card that will then engage you in combat. So you'll, it's like acts like a mini villain that you'll need to deal with otherwise it's going to be attacking you each turn. And some like this Hydra mercenary have the guard keyword. So you have to kill this minion before you're able to start attacking the villain again. You'll have certain other cards like this upgrade card that will be added to the villain and will help buff, buff it in this example when Rhino attacks. So once the villain has carried out those steps to the phase, that then ends the turn and you rinse and repeat this process. So that's a rough overview of how this game plays. What did I think of it? So who is this for? Well it just needs to put on a couple of pounds to be a medium weight game and this is a living card game which means that you're going to have fixed release schedules of a fixed set of cards. So if you like your card games where well, you're buying product and you know what bang for your, your buck you're getting then there might be something here for you. You might want to consider this you if you liked Sentinels of the Multiverse published by Greater Than Games or Eon's End published by Action Phase Games and Indie Boards and Cards. So the former has a bit more originality, but sadly a little bit more bookkeeping as well. And the latter is a traditional deck builder where you're upgrading your deck as you play throughout the game. So in terms of gameplay, well, everything is just so tight mechanically here. And you can see where they borrowed from previous Living Guard card games from here and there to just take the best parts of what they thought from those and brought it up to date to what is just an extremely enjoyable gameplay experience. Some of the things I liked about it. So 
judging where you want to be in your alter ego state and your hero state because this turn sequence is actually a little bit jarring for veteran card players but without it um, I'm referring mostly to uh, untapping everything in the middle of the turn effectively but without that you would miss out on so much strategy and so much nuance as to when you when you pounce, when you stay back, when you recover, all those sorts of things make for some exceptionally meaningful decisions. So the hand management element, sequencing is the word of the day for Marvel Champions. You need to do everything in the right sequence to make the absolute most out of your turns. And so this is a nice level of thinkiness without going overboard. The strategy and depth on offer here, I think hits just the right note. So talking a little bit about the product itself, well, they've allowed for a great design space here that can be built upon. And you can imagine the, the sky's the limit in, term, in terms of what they can turn this game into over time. And I'm excited to see what they'll do with it because the deck building concepts, all of those things are gonna allow, the roles are gonna allow for you to build on this and just I just think it's onwards and upwards in terms of gameplay. Being able to mix and match all of the roles with the different identities just adds to that level of replayability. Finding different styles of play with each of the superheroes that have their own strengths and weaknesses is gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. So player scaling on paper is really well done. You just increase the hit points on the villains, you, you add more threat, all that sort of thing. But I wouldn't really want to be playing this with three or four players unless you've got that really tight play group that's going to thematically play through all of the turns because I think four players is just would become a little bit too grindy. So I'm going to see myself playing this solo or with two players probably more often than not. So I also like the way that you have to pay equal attention at all times to the villain scheming and doing damage to the villain. You're never just trying to get on top of the scheme and then rushing to damage the villain and kill them throughout their various stages. You have to constantly juggle those two to win a game. It's not the hardest game, but there are options in there, the expert variants, all those sorts of things that give you options to tailor your gameplay experience. So really, really, I can't say enough positive things about the value of the product and the game that you're getting in this core set. So in terms of the look and feel and theme of the game, well, production quality and component quality is of a very, very high standard. And for what is really just a platform product, as I've already mentioned, for future expansions, you're also getting really quite high value for money. The artwork is quite often hit and miss in card games like this, but again, is of a very, very high standard, and I'm really pleased that everything on offer here looks and feels the way you would hope it would. It isn't the most highly thematic game, but for those of you that are fans of the IP, you're going to have absolutely no problem immersing yourself into this game. So with all that being said, Dice vs Cards are going to give a final score of 8 out of 10. And that's being fully cognizant that probably in the next few months as more and more products get released, that I will comfortably be able to rate this a 9 out of 10 moving forward. So although there's nothing groundbreaking on offer here, everything is absolutely tight as a drum and I can't wait to see what comes next. So that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Champion of the Universe, Marvel Contest of Champions, Trico Slatterus, Marvel Champions the card game. Nailed it.